It's been a tough last few years to be a Los Angeles Angels fan. Despite having two of the best players ever to play the game on their roster in Shohei Otani and Mike Trout, the Halos managed just 73 wins in each of the last two seasons. They also currently have one of the worst farm systems in baseball, and with Otani having moved across town to the Dodgers now, things could get worse before they get a lot better. The Angels and owner Artie Moreno have shown a willingness to spend money on big time free agents in the past, but their decisions on who to spend money on have been questionable. Case in point, Anthony Rendon. Perhaps no player embodies the Angels in consistency and overpaid mediocrity more than their third baseman, who seems to care very little about actually playing the sport that netted him multi-generational wealth. Rendon acquisition did look decent at the time. When the team signed him back in 2019, it looked like a move that could finally put the team over the top. The veteran MVP candidate was entering the prime of his career and coming off a World Series title with the Washington Nationals. But perhaps they should have done a bit more homework on the man behind the bat before they gave him a yacht load of money. You see, fast forward to 2024, and the Rendon experiment has been nothing short of a complete disaster. He hasn't managed to play more than 58 games per season thanks to a rash of injuries, and his aforementioned off-the-field behavior and attitude have made him a pariah among fans, players, and the media alike. The only headlines Rendon seems to be making these days are for altercations with fans, or comments about how he wishes the baseball season were shorter, or, as of recently, that baseball isn't even a top priority in his life. Yeah, seriously. And now, at the precise moment when the Angels need their slugger more than ever, he seems least likely to answer that call. So, how did this happen? How did one of the most promising young talents in baseball turn into one of its most aggressively insufferable has-beens, and why does this put such a large stain on the baseball world at large? A young Anthony Rendon didn't seem destined for baseball superstardom. Growing up in the Houston suburbs, Rendon stood just 5'4 and 103 pounds as a sophomore in high school. He seemed to love the game at this point, however, and tried not to let his short stature keep him from believing in his dreams. As he once said, I was just hoping one day I'll wake up and be 6 feet tall. And sure enough, before his junior year, Rendon did hit a growth spurt, eventually reaching close to 6 feet at 5'11. He was an All-State shortstop his senior year and elected to attend nearby Rice University despite being drafted by the Atlanta Braves in the 27th round. He still had more developing yet to do. It paid off. At Rice, Rendon established himself as one of the best college players in the nation with one of its most complete skill sets, the dish. He was named Baseball America's Freshman of the Year before winning the Dick Hauser Trophy and being named Baseball America's College Player of the Year as a sophomore. That season, Rendon had a 530 on base percentage while blasting 26 home runs and stealing 14 bases. He was also now playing flashy defense at third base, a position that better suited his limited range. Rendon still only had average speed and athleticism per reports, and below average size, but he had phenomenal hand-eye coordination and an effortless swing. Rice's head coach Wayne Graham, who had once played big league ball back in the 1960s, said that the first time he saw Rendon swing a bat, he knew exactly who his quick wrists reminded him of. Hank Aaron. You want to see Hank Aaron's wrists? Graham told his assistant coaches, there they are. Don't mess with him. Perhaps as an ominous sign of things to come, Rendon spent his junior year plagued by a shoulder injury, which forced him into playing most of his games as a designated hitter, and limited his power at the plate. Still, the Washington Nationals, who had dented players like Steven Strasburg and Bryce Harper in recent drafts, felt good enough about Rendon's potential to draft him with the 6th overall pick in 2011. Rendon rose through the minors quickly, dominating AA pitching in 2012 with 1,064 OPS and just 25 strikeouts before making it to the majors to stay in 2013. He had 265's rookie season while cracking 23 doubles and showing a good eye at the plate overall. He did struggle a bit to make the adjustment to second base where he'd been moved due to franchise cornerstone Ryan Zimmerman being perched there at this time, but his breakout year would come in his sophomore campaign after he'd been moved back to the hot corner following Zimmerman being converted to a first baseman as he proceeded to lead the NL in runs scored while posting a 287, 351, 473 slash, a 126 OPS plus, and 21 home runs. He was awarded a Silver Slugger Award and placed fifth in the league's MVP voting. For a 24-year-old just a couple years out of college, this was certainly a big accomplishment. Then, the injury bug bit Rendon for the first time in his MLB career in 2015, a season in which he played just 80 games while hitting 264 with 5 dingers and a below average 98 OPS plus. Still, these temporary struggles couldn't hold him down long, as he was back to form in 2016, winning the league's comeback player of the year before posting his best season so far in 2017. In his first month that season, Rendon went an incredible 6 for 6 with 3 home runs and 10 RBI against the Mets, setting a team record for RBIs in a game. He finished the season with a 301 average, 25 home runs, and a 139 OPS plus. This came with a 6.1 overall war and 937 OPS, borderline MVP numbers, netting him a 6th place finish for the award. Somehow, things continued to get better for Rendon in both 2018 and then 2019. 
he led the league in doubles both seasons with 44, earning himself the nickname Tony Two Bags, and emerged as one of the Nationals' principal leaders as they went on to complete one of the most miraculous and surprising World Series runs in recent MLB history, and route to them clinching their first title in franchise history in 2019. That year, Rendon finished third in the MVP voting with his best season yet, including a 319 average, 34 home runs, a league leading 126 RBIs, and a dominant 157 OPS plus. Pretty much every number painted him as a superstar, his 345 slash, his 1000 OPS, 7.1 more, and 6 DRS, establishing him as one of the best overall third basemen in the sport, right up there with Manny Machado, Nolan Arenado, and Jose Ramirez. And it couldn't have come at a better time, as he was said to be a free agent for the first time in his career following that year. Just before 2020, Rendon signed a 7-year, $245 million contract with the Los Angeles Angels. This was seen as an overpay, largely, but one most in the baseball world seemed to at least understand. Would he be worth 6 war a year for the duration of the deal? Probably not. But he seemed like a near lock for 4 or 5, and for his price, this wouldn't be the worst value in the league. With that being said, his contract at the time was still somehow worth more on an AAV basis than either Shohei Otani or Mike Trout, the Angels' two true superstars. There was no question, Rendon would have to really produce to win over Angel fans with the money the franchise had invested in him. Thanks to the pandemic-shortened 2020 season, Rendon wouldn't end up making his Angels debut until late July. He performed, however, pretty par for the course that first year. Though he did go hitless in his first 28 plate appearances with his new team, he managed to rebound pretty handedly, and at 52 total games that year, he managed to slash 286, 418, 497, with 9 home runs and 31 RBIs, finishing in the top 10 in AL MVP voting. He also recorded his 1,000th MLB hit, another near 345, a war pace around 6 for a full season, a 150 OPS plus, it was a success without question. Unfortunately, this has proven to be Rendon's high water mark in Los Angeles so far. In 2021, he suffered a groin strain in April, followed by a knee contusion in May, and a hamstring pull in July. But it was a right hip impingement that would end his season in August, after just 58 total games, in which he hit a lousy 240 with a 382 slug. He was overall a below average hitter by OPS Plus with a mark of 94. This came with 11 GDP, a crazy pace of 30 for a full season, and a war total of exactly zero. Like, he was literally worth a zero by this metric. For a player making nearly $40 million a year, this was abjectly a horrible year. But it totally could have been an aberration, right? I mean, Rendon hadn't missed significant time since 2015. He was as solid as a ball player comes. This, in fact, had been a big motivator in the Angels' pursuit of him. They were used to their superstar signings falling to injury year after year, whether that be with Albert Pujols, Josh Hamilton, or Mike Trout. They needed consistency, someone who could actually stay on the field. The following season was no bounce back for Anthony, instead turning out to be about equally bleak for both him and the Angels. There was an especially cool moment when Rendon homered left-handed off of position player Brett Phillips during Reed Detmer's no-hitter in May. But still, he injured his wrist, and in June, the Angels announced he would miss the remainder of the season following surgery. It's not like LA was hurting for his production. He would finish that shortened season batting just 229 with 5 home runs and another around 100 OPS plus in just 47 games. He was at least worth a positive war total, however, at 0.9. Being injured or even having a cast on his right hand didn't stop Rendon from getting in on some action on the field. In a bench-clearing brawl against Seattle, Rendon struck the Mariners outfielder Jesse Winker in his face with his left hand, receiving a five-game suspension as a result. This would certainly not be Rendon's last run-in with controversy as his deflated tenure in the City of Angels endured. In 2023, the now healed Rendon picked up right where he had left off the previous season, with a violent physical altercation, on opening day no less. After going hitless with two strikeouts, the frustrated Rendon grabbed an Oakland fan who had been razzing him above the dugout by the shirt, screamed some profanities at him, and then took a swipe at him, which thankfully missed. Still, it was good enough to result in another suspension, this one being four games, which Rendon didn't even bother appealing. Rendon's brief return to the field after the altercation was again interrupted by injury, when he hurt his groin in May. Then, after recovering from that, he didn't have to wait long before following a ball off his shin in July. It was initially diagnosed as a bone bruise, but eventually identified as a fractured tibia. For the third time in three years, the Angels made the announcement that Rendon would miss substantial time due to the injury. In 43 games that season, Rendon, now 33 years old, had hit just 236 with two home runs, a 0.1 more, and a career-low 88 OPS+. Plus. Another poor season by basically every metric. But just when you thought things couldn't get any worse for the third baseman, Rendon himself decided to make things even bleaker. He started to get prickly with the media. In September, when a reporter asked him for an update on his condition, which he hadn't commented on in weeks, he responded, No habla inglés today. 
In his defense, I guess, Rendon has always been kind of a jerk when frustrated about his circumstances. Way back in 2014, when he was a second year player with the Nationals, who had just been snubbed for the NL All-Star roster, Rendon told a Washington Post reporter that he never watched the All-Star game as a kid, nor much baseball in general. I don't watch baseball, he admitted. It's too long and boring. What then would he prefer to watch? The History Channel, he said. A freezing cold take if I've ever heard one. Though history is full of financial tragedies, something he himself is now intrinsically tied to for the rest of his career. Who knows, maybe someday they'll even make a documentary on all the wasted money the Angels spent on Rendon. Recently, he made these feelings even more clear during an interview on the Jack Vita show when he was asked what he would change about the game. We gotta shorten the season, man, he replied. There's too many dang games. 162 games in 185 days or whatever it is. Man, no, we gotta shorten this bad boy up, let's go. Needless to say, some people in the baseball world didn't take too kindly to these comments. Played with Rendon and he literally hates baseball. Former teammate Jonathan Papelbon posted on Twitter, Yeah, it's long. Isn't that what you signed up for? Just tell the team you want to play half the season and give back half your salary. Baseball fans weren't too happy about it either, who were quick to wonder if Rendon's own dislike for the game was contributing to how much time he was spending not playing it. After all, it doesn't seem like a stretch to assume that if you don't like the sport, you get paid tens of millions of dollars a year to play. Why would you hustle to come back from any kind of recovery process? Or even work out in the offseason? Rendon seems to be doing what pisses off fans more than anything else in sports. Phoning it in, collecting his check, and contributing basically nothing to his team. For a sport already known for having issues with connecting to the general population due to its sometimes glacial pace, hearing Rendon side with the detractors couldn't be a more embarrassing look for baseball, and especially for the Angels. Where was Rendon's personality evaluations when they were pursuing him? Honestly, you can make a similar case for Josh Hamilton as well. Say anything you want about Pujols or Trout, but they love baseball more than anything and have done their best to contribute whatever they could. They showed up as often as their bodies would let them. Rendon won't even update fans on whatever injury status he's currently dealing with. What an unlikable presence in the MLB, and one that couldn't be more toxic to the game overall. So, here we are. A player was once an all-star, a silver slugger, and one of the best third basemen of the game has now spent most of the past 36 months either swimming in mediocrity, sitting on the bench, or complaining about what he would improve about the sport that pays him tens of millions of dollars every year to watch it from the dugout. Can Anthony Rendon, a very outspoken Christian, still find his own redemption with the halos of Los Angeles? He's already got a comeback player of the year award after all. I'm not so sure. Needless to say, Rendon has been a completely different player with the Angels than he was with the Nationals so far. In his six years in Washington, he slashed 290, 369, 490, and was a perennial MVP candidate. So far, in his four years as an Angel, he's hit 249 with a total of 22 home runs and 111 RBIs in 200 games. That's right, he's averaged just 50 games a season and has hit literally less home runs in total than he did in any one of his last three seasons in our nation's capital. Rendon's unusually high rate of injury is probably most responsible for this brutal decline. But what is responsible for these injuries? So far, most of what he's endured seemingly could have been at least aided in being prevented through focused training. The groin injury is a great example, or the hamstring issue he dealt with back in 2021. Now entering his age 34 season, his productive days probably already would have been numbered, even if he had managed to stay healthy the last three seasons. He still has three full seasons left on his deal, so theoretically there is still time to help make up for some of that lost potential. It's basically impossible for Los Angeles to trade him, and with the departure of Otani, LA could use a big hitter who could help anchor their lineup more than ever. Still, they don't need someone who could be an injury risk on the field and an even bigger headache off of it. Pretty much no team does. If it's not already obvious, it seems the biggest reason Anthony Rendon will never return to his past form or anything like it is not the injuries to his body, which are a potentially treatable set of conditions, but is instead what's going on inside his head. He just doesn't seem to care anymore. Maybe Rendon should just retire and spare the Angels having to pay him all that owed money if he hates the sport so much. He's already made hundreds of millions of dollars in his career so far after all. Maybe he should just go back to Houston, watch the History Channel, and leave the long slog of a 162 game season to the professionals who actually care. But that doesn't seem likely. Instead, he'll probably just keep collecting a paycheck and making routine visits to the training room. And unless a real shift in his outlook occurs, it doesn't seem like there's much of a chance of deviation from this grim outcome. I'm not ruling it out. I'd love to see a turnaround. But as it currently stands, Anthony Rendon has become an embarrassment to Major League Baseball. Now, Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel and clicking this playlist for other essay content just like this. Have a great rest of your day.